This is Beyond the Uniform with TJ Brassel. Welcome into another episode of Beyond the Uniform. I'm TJ Brassel, and I'm joined today by 2016 Olympian and Bowerman Award winner Jenna Prandini. Jenna, thank you for joining the show. Thanks for having me. The Bowerman's essentially the Heisman of track and field, and one's given out to the to a male and a female each year. So I'm really talking to like a track and field legend. So you know that's, that's it's pretty. <laughs> nah, not at all, not at all. All right, so last season you ended with at USA's. You had a foot injury and had to pull out of USA's. What what exactly happened there, and and how's that coming along now? Um, yeah. So I ran the first round of the hundred, and before I even ran that, I knew something bad was happening. Um, it kind of had been a buildup. It was going on for a while, but like after that race, I was like, "There's no way." Um, so I had to pull out, um, did all the imaging and stuff, and I had a stress fracture and a bunch of other stuff going on in my foot. So um, I was down and out for a little bit, a um, couple months, and then Flo's kind of just been working me in. Um, we took it kind of slow coming back into it, but um, we're full out training now, and um, I'm completely healthy, and practices have been going really well. So I'm excited for it. Season starts up in like two weeks, so I'm, I'm ready for it. Yeah, it's it's coming. It's coming. Now. Well, that's good to hear that that it's it's improving a lot. Um so the last couple of years you there's been kind of some like injury problems throughout that's kind of hampered the seasons. Coming into Olympic year, how do you alter your training to kind of make sure that you're all right and you're set to go for the trials and then hope the Olympics? Um I think the big focus this year was like first of all getting healthy back to 100% so that obviously I'm can train and do whatever I need to do, but then um, really just focus in on like the recovery part, uh, making sure I'm getting treatment, whether my foot or anything's hurting or I feel great, just making sure I stay on top of it. And then just keeping my communication open with flow and not try to like say I'm fine when I'm really not fine. So um, just taking it day by day and making sure that I'm doing all the little things I need to do to stay healthy and, um, you know, get to the, get to the trials healthy. How do you find that balance of trying to kind of push through and not make sure that every little thing you're like, you're thinking is an injury, but then like you were saying, being honest and being like, okay, I need to, I need to call it here. I think that's the hardest part is like knowing like, you know, as a track athlete, you're always going to have like aches and pains or wake up feeling really sore from a hard workout. And it's like the fine balance of knowing like when it's time to be like, all right, you know, you really need to pay attention to this or like, oh, you're just sore, like push through it. Um, uh, and that's something that like, I like to say I'm good at, but clearly I'm not because last year um, it didn't work out that well. Um, <laughs> but that's something that I'm doing this, this year, taking it like I know when I feel pain, like I'm not a baby. Like I know, I know when I'm hurt and I know when I'm like just sore. So I'm just listening to my body. And um, when I do feel any little like or pain, just going and getting treatment and get on top of it and jump on it quick. And then within the last couple of years, so you moved to Texas to start training. What led to that decision to head down to Texas to move? Um, I think it was just overall a really good fit for me. And um, when I asked Coach Flo if I could come and, and train with him, um, he welcomed me with open arms. He took me in and, um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a great – Girl group to train with so um, I knew I was going to train with really good people and then you know trusting Flo 100% that he can get me and and you know take me to be the athlete that I want to be so it's been really great so far well what's been the biggest difference in your training since you got down there um I guess obviously the workouts are different um I think every coach has their own unique workout <laughs> um I think that was kind of a shock uh, for my body at first, but, um, the biggest difference is that I have, you know, other pros to train with. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm getting pushed in practice every single day. So, um, you know, it's just an overall, a great atmosphere, um, from a coaching standpoint, from a training standpoint. And, um, you know, I get to live in Austin, so it's been really good. Now, a lot of people might not necessarily realize like how big of a training part, how big a training partner can be in track because it's it's an individual sport so people just think you're just kind of on your own what kind of difference does that make to have 
so many elite athletes to train with? Um, I mean, it makes a huge difference. I mean, like, just take Kenny, for example. Like, you know, we both have the exact same goal. Of, you know, we want to go to the Olympics and um, try to win a medal. Um, but, like, we, li- we live the exact same lifestyle. So um, take the track out of it, you know, day-to-day – we're able to keep each other honest and like do the same kind of things. Like we hang out every single day, but like on the track, we're pushing each other. Like there's workouts where I'll be laid out and she's just kicking my butt. Or there's other days where like I'll be pushing her and, and it's just like just a good dynamic to have other like-minded people around you. Like every single day, like, you know, this is our goal and this is what we want to do. So even though Kenny is a hundred meter hurdler, you got you guys still train together. Like how does how does that work where you guys still train even though you're doing different different events? We train together like on Mondays and Fridays, which is our running workouts. And obviously we do like lifting and stuff, but like those are the running workouts and so like we do all that together, like Kenny and I, um, Tiana, we all do those together. Um, and then Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays are more so like sprint focus. So my training partner there is always Tiana. Kenny's always curling and I definitely am not going to try that. (laughs) We're not going to see you on the hurdles anytime soon. Um, uh, yeah, no hurdles are never going to be in my future. (laughs) (laughs) And so you mentioned Kenny and are, did you guys know each other before you went down to Texas or were you, is that, was that a friendship that kind of happened once you got down there? Um, I mean, we've always known each other. Um, obviously we went, we were the same year in college. So, um, we went through college knowing each other. We were obviously in different events, but you know, you know, you always know who's there. Um, and then we've been friends, but like once we got, once I got to Texas, um, we obviously became close closer because we train together. So, yeah. So you, you were telling me beforehand that you guys are next door neighbors and I've seen on like Instagram and stuff, you guys really love like scaring each other on different, different videos. What's, what's the best story of who's gotten who better? Oh my gosh. Yeah. We do like scaring each other. Um, I think it really starts like my mom is really big into pranks. So like she'll send both of us packages of like different things to scare other people with. So like anytime people come and like hang out with us, there's, we always have some sort of like new toy to play with. Um, But I think the best (laughs) one is like my mom had sent like this box and like, if you pull the top open, like this, it's disgusting. Like this little rat like comes out. So it like, when you open it, you think, like, this mouse is going to, like, bite your hand off. But obviously, it's fake. So, like, we had, um, I think it was Shaquilla. We had her, like, opening the box, and it, like, jumped out of her. And she has the best reaction. So, like, she flew backwards. But, um, I mean, we've gotten so many people with that. We have that. She sent, like, a fake rat. Um, like, I don't know. There's too many different things. But Kenny has recently been scaring me. <laughs> But there's revenge coming soon. Uh oh. All right. Well, we'll shall have to be on the lookout for that one. So it's really it really spawns from spawns from your mom then. It's really my mom's fault, honestly. I would say it's her fault. But like, I think we, yeah. I don't know. It's just funny to like scare people. It's always like good entertainment. But I would blame my mom for sure. All right. Good to know. Good to know. All right. And the other thing I saw on I think it was on Instagram is that you guys you guys consider yourself twins. So I was just curious, all, besides the obvious resemblance, um, yeah, what, I, <laughs> I think, you, I think you guys look pretty much identical, but besides that, like, what is it about you, about you guys that you guys are so much alike? Um, I think besides not looking alike, everything else is alike. <laughs> uh, if that makes sense. Like our personalities are pretty similar. Um, we get, I don't know, like everything, like besides not looking like we like, um, we do everything like together. But also when it comes to track, um, I've never really met someone that like goes into practice and works like as hard like 
I would say she works harder than I do. Like, she's just so focused and dedicated to what she does. Um, and then, like, outside the track, I don't know, just everything that we do. It's just, like, when we say something, when we're thinking something, we just look at each other, and I'm like, how the heck did you know that I was thinking that? Like, it's so weird. But, like, yeah, it's pretty fun, and it makes it, like, it makes uh, everything a lot better. Good. That's good. Um, okay, but so when you're talking about how hard she works and everything, so I know we're you were saying how she pushes you and stuff, but when you think about it, like how much does how much what difference does it make that you get to train with a world record holder every day? Like how big of a deal kind of is that? Um, I mean, she's the best to ever do it. So it's kind of cool to like. I mean, obviously we do our running workouts together. But, like, even just to see her in hurdle practice, like, watching her do what she does um, is, like, really crazy to see um, because she's so good at it. Um, like, I've gotten to see, like, a lot of other hurdlers even, like, practice and, like, the way that she practices and, like, how good she is at, like, technically doing it. It's just, like, blows my mind. Even – even though I see it every single day, like to go sometimes I'm like, dang, like, how are you doing that right now? Like, it's so good. And, um, like to be able to, to see her, like do her thing is like pretty cool. And it's like, yeah, you have the world record, but now that I'm watching you practice, I'm like, Oh, like this is exactly how you got it. Like you work so hard and like, you're so good at what you do. That's awesome. All right. And you, when you were talking about, you're just kind of enjoying Austin now. So how are you, how are you liking the Lone Star State? It's good. I mean, the weather's good. It's a little bit like bipolar. Like one day I'll wake up and it's like 80 degrees and the next day, like it's snowing. And then by the end of the day, it's like 75 again. So i um, getting used to that weather part. But I like it a lot. There's so much to do and um, yeah, you can never really be bored here. So I saw, I believe the interview was last for, from last season. Uh, you were talking about how you didn't really had a, ha, you haven't had a chance to explore Austin yet. And you were saying that in the off season, you were going to try to explore. Well, now the off season is pretty much come and gone. Have you gotten, what kind of exploring have you gotten to do? Um, we did have off season, but I was a little bit injured. So I was on crutches all off season. So I didn't get to do as much as I wanted, but okay, that's fair. <laughs> We got to go paddle boarding. We were on the lake. Um, we got to go to more restaurants. So I got to explore it a little bit more and kind of see what Austin's all about. But, like, the vibe of the city is, like, really cool and fun and a lot of, like, people our age. So, yeah, it's a good place. So you are saying you got to go to a lot more restaurants and stuff. What, what, what's, your, what's your favorite place so far? Um... That's a good question. I would say, like, uh, there's a lot of barbecue spots here, but I guess, like, the one that we go to the most would be, like, Black's Barbecue, Terry okay. Black's Barbecue, but um, there's a lot of good food, so it depends on what kind of mood I'm in and what I'm craving for the day. <laughs> so what, what, what about Terry's is so special, then? I just haven't had anything that's bad there. It's, like, good <laughs> barbecue, and, like, I just feel like it's just, like, a, when you think of Texas, you think of, like, barbecue, like, Absolutely. Very so, like, I don't know if I'm thinking of a Texas restaurant, that's it right there. All right, all right. But, so, I remember in college, you were, you were a pretty dang good chef yourself. So, do, are, you, are you still are you still cooking it up at home, or are you just rocking the Texas barbecue now? No, I cook, like, every night, basically. So, um, the fact that Kenny's my neighbor makes it easy, so... We just eat every night together, and I definitely do all the cooking, so <laughs> that's fun. And I, I like, enjoy cooking, so I'll call my mom up and be like, hey, what should I cook today? Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely still doing it. What's your, what's your favorite thing to make? Ooh. Now, that is an impossible question. <laughs> I'm literally, when I say I'm indecisive, like, I really am so indecisive. So, um, typically, like... Cause I'll cook, I'll cook dinner for myself and Kenny. So I'll be like, Hey, what do you want for dinner tonight? Cause I can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do you have a barbecue? Do you barbecue as well? Like would that count as Texas barbecue? Cause you're in Texas. 
I mean, it, the, the, if I barbecue, it definitely doesn't taste like Texas barbecue, <laughs> but I do barbecue a lot. Like, it's not at my house, it's at Kenny's, but that's literally, we cut like a hole in the fence. So I just walk over there and do it over there. You cut a hole in the fence between your guys' houses. Yeah, because walking from front door to front door is like way too, way too far. <laughs> If that's not true friendship right there, I don't I don't know what is. Right. <laughs> I think it was I want to say it was my sophomore year at Oregon. You pretty much made the entire Thanksgiving dinner by yourself. So that was uh you're you're pretty pretty spot on there. A few episodes ago I was talking to Kendall Ellis mm-hmm. and we we're talking about kind of like the your mindset in a race and kind of your your like race plan and how everyone has a race plan, um, whether it's you're a distance runner or a sprinter, stuff like that. Can you talk me through what a race plan is like for a sprinter? Because obviously, distance-wise, you you're, you have so many laps and you're doing different things here and there. What's it like for a sprinter? I think for a sprinter, like, our race happens so fast. Like, I think the most important thing is, is, like, that you're not thinking about your race plan. Um, like, I think every day in practice is where you're, like, trying to execute what your coach wants you to do. Um, whether it's like the start, your acceleration, like staying patient through your phases and, um, like in the right positions. Um, and then when it comes time to racing, like for me, I think the biggest thing is like to not think about my race plan. Um, like I might think of, I'll obviously visualize it and think about it beforehand, but like once the gun goes off, like all I want to do is race and, um, know that like the race plan is going to happen. Um, but my job is just to go out there and compete. All right. Absolutely. And so your specialty is the 200. Um, and with the, uh, this past year, the IAAF announced that the 200 is not going to be in the diamond league and stuff this upcoming season. How does that kind of affect you and how you're training and how you look at this upcoming season? Um, I guess it doesn't really change my training at all. I mean, our whole main focus of this year is, is obviously to qualify for the Olympics. So, like, our whole mindset right now is get to the trials and get top three. Um, and so, really, we're just placing meets that make sense around that to get me prepared for that. So, I mean, it sucks that they would take the 200 out because I feel like everyone likes that event. Um, but I guess for me, like, there's still going to be other meets for the 200. And then... Um, I still got the 100 too. So all the diamond leagues that I need to run the, the hundred that I want to get into, I can run the hundred with. So, um, yeah. So will you, is there a chance that you do both the 100 and the 200 at trials or is it more so focused on the two? No, I'm a hundred percent doing both. So okay. yeah, you, you'll see me in both the hundred and the 200. Good. Good. I like to see that. Um, and then, so when you came out of Oregon, you ended up signing with Puma and you kind of became essentially the face of Puma for, at least on the, on the women's side, for sure, the face of Puma. What was that like to all of a sudden just be thrown into the face of a brand? I mean, it was really cool. I think Puma's whole vibe is like more of like a family atmosphere. So um, when I signed with them at the time, I actually don't know now, but like, At the time, I was the only American woman to have signed with Puma, like a track athlete. So um, it was really cool because, I mean, I got to show up to meets and like, it sounds funny, but like, you know, when you look at the line, it's always just like everyone's wearing the same uniform because you wear your brand's uniform. So like I got to go and like wear a different uniform and um, be a part of a brand that like not many people in the U.S. got to be a part of. And it was really cool. And it was a lot of fun, and um, obviously, I still love being with him and being a part of such a cool brand. Now, the kind of the male face of Puma is Usain Bolt. So, what was that like to kind of be on the same level as you're the female face, and one of the greatest Olympians of all time is the male face of Puma? I mean, he's the face of track and field. He's the face of everything. Like he. He's the king of track and field, but, um, I mean, it's cool. It's cool to be a part of something where like, there's so many, um, great people and to be able to just, you know, be a part of a brand and like be a track brand where like, 
Usain Bolt is the world record holder. So it's like, oh, like, I want to be on that team because, like, I want to be a part of that and be a part of something special. So um, for me, it was just like, absolutely, like, I would love to be, like, in the same category as that, you know? Did you ever have a chance to kind of work with him on stuff? And if so, what was it like to, to kind of work with Usain? Um, work with him? No, but we did go to like a meet in Australia. I think it was in like 2017. Um, okay. And it was like the Nitro Athletic meet. So like they had a bunch of, it was a bunch of relay meets and, or relay events and then like off events kind of. And mm -hmm. so I was on his team. And that was where we did like a co-ed four by one. So okay. We four by one together. So that was really cool and scary. But um, I mean, other than, yeah, that was like probably the most interaction that we had. Were you were you giving to or taking the baton from him, or were you guys on different legs or legs where where you guys didn't get to interact? No, I was definitely on the third leg, and he was the second leg. So he was coming into me, and we didn't really practice before that. So like, I was just like. The amount of steps that I gave him was insane. And then I also took off early because I'm like, he's coming in so fast. Like, I need to start running now because if not, he's going to trample me. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say your favorite thing about working with Puma is? Um, I think it's just like they're loyal to their athletes. And, I mean, they care about us as people. So, um I mean, like you said earlier, I've been injured and I've had um, battles like that. And, you know, they've always stood by me and 100% um, supported me and um, taken care of me in that way. So, uh, I mean, it's just nice to know that, like, aside from obviously they, they like me as an athlete, but they take care of me as just a person, too. So um, they're just a really cool brand and um, I like their gear also. <laughs> That's a big plus. That's definitely helpful. Um, so in college, you were in front of the cameras all the time and the media always wanted to talk to you and you were essentially the darling of collegiate track and field and everyone kind of loved you, but, and obviously still do, but, Not anymore. <laughs> but I remember that you were, you kind of didn't really like the attention. You didn't really like all the cameras and all that kind of stuff. And then when you signed with Puma, like we we're saying, you're kind of the face and you're thrust into having to do that all over again but even even more so so how did you kind of have to develop being able to deal with all that and be comfortable and just kind of accept that the media is what you're going to have to be a part of um I think that's still like a working a work in progress um I don't let necessarily like I'm the type of athlete where, like, I like to go do my work, get in, compete, and just be done. But um, I guess, like, Oregon really prepared me for that because you can't really escape anything there, um, especially because it's such a, like, a high-profile track and field school. Um, so they prepared me, and then um, I think it's just something that, like, it ha when it happens, it happens. So you just kind of accept it and roll with it, and it is what it is. And it's been fun. It's been really fun. Good. That's awesome. Um, all right. So we were talking about uh, how you didn't get to do much exploring because you're injured and stuff like that. But besides a little exploring and besides your mastery in the kitchen, what else do you like to do in your downtime? Um, to be honest, I watch a lot of Netflix in my downtime. <laughs> Netflix and Hulu. But... Um, I would say, like, I don't have any, like, really cool hobbies like some people have. But, like, cooking really, like, is kind of like a hobby just because I do it every night. Um, and it's just, like, what can I make that's, like, different, that's not, like, really bad for you? Um, so, in some way, I guess that. But, like, I mean, just exploring, like, on the weekends, like, it'll just be, like, there's so much to do. Like, oh, what can we go do now that we haven't done? Just to kind of check out everywhere, every part of the city. When you're, t when you're talking about cooking and making sure it's not bad for you and stuff like that, how important is, like, a diet to a track and field athlete to make sure that you're, you're recovering and getting to the levels that you need to to be able to compete? I mean, 
you know, like the food you put in is like the fuel for like your workouts and races and stuff. So um, I, it is important just because like, I mean, we want to compete at such a high level and, and be like the best we can possibly be. So um, they always say like the little things are what like help make you be like the best you could possibly be. And like nutrition is such like a huge part of it. And um, trying to figure out what to put in your body and, and like perform at the highest level is like really interesting and cool. And so looking forward to the Olympics, Olympic trials and stuff like that. Um, recently there's been a lot of talk about what will happen with the Olympics with the coronavirus going on and if they're still going to be going on and that kind of stuff. What, Kind, what do you think plays in an athlete's mindset when, I mean, this is what everyone's been working for for so long, but then you risk potentially catching this, the disease of the coronavirus and stuff like that? I think, like, for me, like, for our training group, I think it's just, like, business as usual. Like, we're going to keep training as hard as we possibly can, and um, really nothing's changing um, with the virus. Um so we're just going in every day, putting in the work, and um, hopefully by the time the Olympics come around, like, they'll have that all resolved and we can um, go and compete. But, I mean, that's something that's kind of out of our control. Um, so the only thing that I can do is, like, show up to practice and keep on working hard because, um, you know, that's it's still on and it's still, like, our main focus. Have you heard of if – so say they decide – they can't hold it in Tokyo if there will be any like alternate routes of anything or is it just going to be like, Oh, sorry, no Olympics. Um, I have no idea. Hopefully there would be a backup plan, but um, yeah, I absolutely have no idea. <laughs> and then with the trials being at what will be the new Hayward field this year, I've been talking to every, every Oregon athlete I've talked to, I've had to ask this question. So what do you think, that experience will be like going back to Hayward field, even though it's not the same Hayward field as where you grew up, basically. I think it's going to be different. Like it's a whole new stadium and like, I've only seen pictures. So, I mean, it looks really awesome and amazing. And like, I mean, I know that Oregon's going to do an insane job of making sure it's like the best of the best when it comes to the facility. So, I mean, it's going to be really cool going back, but like, I think my thing, I've been asked that a lot, but, like, the thing that made Hayward Field so special and, like, so cool was, like, the fans that came, like, the track fans, they're genuinely, like, very interested in the sport and genuinely, like, support us so much. So I think the, the stadium's going to be new and cool and whatever, but, like, the people filling the stands are still the exact same. So I think, like, that Hayward magic feel and, like, the large crowd and everyone being, like, there and supportive will still be the same. Makes sense. What would what are you most excited to see with the new stadium? Shoot, I'm excited to see the whole thing. Like <laughs> all the stuff that they've been saying and like the pictures I've been seeing, like it just looks like so cool. And it's like a track that I mean, there's no facility like it in, in any part of America at least. Like maybe you could you can go to Europe and, and find a track that's that big and, and grand, but like that's gonna be like by far and away the best track in America. So um, it's that's cool and exciting. And to have a facility like that in the U.S. is going to be really cool. Is there any part of you that is a little jealous that you didn't get to compete there while you were at Oregon? I mean, definitely. Like, that, that stadium is going to be awesome. And, like, everything that they're using now is going to be new. Like, they're going to get new lockers, weight room, all that stuff. Um, so compared to when we were there, it's going to be like 5,000 times better, but, um, no competing like at Hayward field is also like really cool. And, um, there was nothing wrong with our facilities in the first place. Like it was really cool to be a part of that program, um, with the old Hayward field. So yeah, I'm jealous cause it's all new, but like at the same time, um, the old Hayward field is pretty cool too. I agree. I agree. Although the one thing. I'm a little jealous about is the cool locker rooms that they're going to get. That was the one thing I wish we had was a cool locker room. The rooms were so bad when we were there, but not anymore. 
<laughs> no, not anymore. Not anymore. Well, I appreciate the time uh, or you spending the time with me today and good luck in the rest of the season. And we'll be, we'll be keeping an eye out for you for, uh, for the rest of the year. Thank you. Good awesome. Night. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for listening and watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a minute of any of these interviews. And I'll see you again next week for another, another episode of Beyond the Uniform. This was Beyond the Uniform with TJ Brassel. Join me again next week when Olympic sprinter English Gardner joins the show.